Big Mouth Season 2 dove deeper into the horrors of puberty, giving us a taste of all the psychological aspects of hitting those hormones hard. One thing the show didn't explore, though, aside from a school marquee, did we ever figure out who the ponytail killer is? We sure didn't, bud. And my years of watching SVU and listening to murder podcasts have prepared me for this moment! Uh, I mean, you aren't a real detective just because you like murder. You shut your whore mouth, Carr. I'm basically Olivia Benson. All right, fair enough. I'm Chris Carr. And I'm VL Wittenbinder. Do you like my cop name? Eh, don't make no never mind to me. <laughs> and today we're figuring out who the ponytail killer is on Big Mouth. <laughs> the facts. Here's what we know about the ponytail killer. Firstly, this serial killer is solely interested in killing people with ponytails. With four confirmed kills, the killer shows a preference towards women, but has targeted at least one man. So it appears gender doesn't really play a role in victim selection. In the season one finale, we see the first person perspective of the killer stalking Jesse, but he immediately loses interest in her the moment she lets her hair down. Secondly, we know that the killer is likely a man, thanks to his deep, creepy breathing in the same scene. <laughs> that said, we're not ruling out a woman from our search, since we've seen some interesting theories circling the internet involving a lady ponytail killer. It should be noted, however, that the PTK is voiced by Nick Kroll in this scene. Is that a clue, or simply placeholding voiceover to throw us off? Thirdly, we know that the killer wears brown gloves, a grayish-blue jacket, drives a blue car, and hangs his ponytail trophies on his rearview mirror like a psycho. We also get a glimpse of the killer's silhouette as they swerve around Coach Steve in Season 2. Is that... is that Hank Hill? Were propane and propane accessories not fulfilling Hill's life anymore? Is killing ladies the only way the King of the Hill feels alive these days? What is this, a crossover episode? I'll give Hank the benefit of the doubt and say he's probably not portal hopping animated universes to commit ponytail genocide. So let's take a look at some real suspects. Suspect number one, Guy Bilzerian, Jay's dad. This one is probably a little too on the nose, but we'd be remiss for not including professional sleazebag Guy Bilzerian. The dude has been pretty clear that he thinks women suck, and he runs Divorcee Plantation Guy Town, which seems like exactly the sort of place you'd keep your murder den. The place begs to be decorated in tarps. Plus, Jay does say that they got marble because it was easy to hose down. Guy Bilzerian is known for stepping out on his missus, so him running around town looking for trim and ponies isn't far-fetched. And based on his law commercials, he definitely seems like a guy who doesn't get what enthusiastic consent is. One of our fans actually suggested that Jay's dad might have killed a sex worker in Vegas and got a taste for it. Or maybe one of his floozies made fun of his bald spot. Or maybe he's secretly going broke and one of these skanks threatened to tell. Who knows? Also, if there's anything I know about murderers, it's that they always insert themselves in the aftermath of the crime. You want to look for the guy who's organizing the search parties, offering clues to the police, volunteering to be someone's lawyer. He shows up real quick when Andrew's in prison. Too quick. And hello, he eats a steak dinner in a jacked up old timey barber chair. Where do you even get one of those? He clearly has an interest in hair that extends to his home life and decor choices. And who can blame him? Dude's wearing a rug. Maybe he needs those ponies to make his sweet little hair yarmulkes. We also know there is a sexual component to the ponytail killings. The perpetrator could be bisexual. Ponytail killer don't discriminate. He snips and slays ladies and dudes. I know this is a little bit of a stretch, but maybe Jay's dad is also bi? Okay, fine, I know that that's not how being gay works, but I'm really trying to solve this murder, you guys! Suspect number two, Jenna Bilzerian, Jay's mother. Sure, Jenna Bilzerian looks nothing like the silhouette, but I've seen her name brought up in a few ponytail killer forums. Could this unstable housewife be taking up ponytail killing as a side hobby when she's not letting Coach Steve make thick in her warm? I'd say unlikely, but it wouldn't be surprising if Guy drove this wino to murder. Plus, she's already shown a disregard for the safety of Jay and his friends. Suspect number three and four, Professor Foreman Greenwald and Greg Glasser, Missy and Jesse's fathers. Now, many a Redditor has been quick to point out two dads who could be the killer, Jesse's dad and Missy's dad. Missy's dad definitely matches up with the killer silhouette, but I'm hard pressed to believe that Missy's woke AF dad is running around snipping ponies and murdering women. And as far as Jesse's dad goes, yes. Yes, Jesse and her mother are the only characters to have ponytails, and yes, I get the theory that he's acting out against Shannon for constantly undermining and emasculating him. However, I just don't believe he'd stop considering murdering his own daughter until she puts her hair down. He's tremendously protective of Jesse and seems to sincerely want what's best for his kid. That doesn't seem like someone capable of brutally murdering their own child. Suspect number five, Cantor Dina. Okay, realistically, we still don't think that the ponytail killer is a woman. And that's not because we don't stand Eileen Wernos. It's mostly because the ponytail killer sounds like a dude when he's stalking Jesse in the park. But you gotta admit, this woman is hell-bent on ruining Jesse's life, right? I mean, she's totally scissoring Shannon! 
Maybe that was just her stalking Karl Lagerfeld in the park when she noticed Jesse. Anyone who does the whole thank you five nonsense outside of a play is a goddamn psycho. It's like when you go back to high school and people are like, oh my god, I'm an actor too, basically. We do so much role playing in sales. <laughs> That's not what my job is, Brooke. I'm not pushing big pharma. I'm making dick jokes on the internet like it's a dying art. Also, can't your Dina and her perfect tits just suck? She broke up Jesse's family. I want her to burn. Suspect number six, Judd Birch, Nick's brother. I mean, Nick did say we were going to see his brother's manifesto on the news one day. And Judd actually says he's writing his manifesto in another episode. Anyone who crawls through ventilation for funsies and announces that they want the world to burn definitely has dabbled in at least the idea of murder. Like, who hides in their own family portrait during a party? It's like he's playing real life Clue. It was Judd in the hallway with a pipe bomb and the anarchist cookbook. I think it's pretty plausible that this kid is running around town snipping ponies and stuffing women in trunks just because he can. Suspect number seven, Rabbi Paul Blart's son, Leo. Here's who I think is most likely the ponytail killer. He's a total creep, and honestly, can you trust any man with a ponytail? Certainly not one who falls asleep to Frasier reruns. We learned from Rabbi Paul Blart that his son has started a new business, wigs for religious dogs. What better way to hide all your murder trophies than placing them on the skulls of dogs? Also, what the hell does he mean when he says, if you only heard about it from the dogs, you're only getting one side of the story? Sure, we anthropomorphize our dogs, but we sure as shit don't get into legal battles about our business affairs with them. Do you know how much poorer I'd be if Pugsley Adams was handling my entrepreneurial ventures? Leo was also a massive creep towards Jesse. When we take a trip to Guy Town, he's so gross towards this very small child. Your daughter's an eight for the figure alone. Ugh. It makes sense that someone who is publicly creepy towards Jesse would be the sort of guy breathing heavy in the bushes over her hairdo. Plus, that heavy breathing and tone definitely sound like Leo. These are just our theories on who the ponytail prowler could be. So hit us up in the comments with whoever you think the real John Bond ponytail is. I really need to catch your name. They 100% do. For more hormone-fueled big mouth videos, click the left of our faces. Or check us out on Plex and Roku. Uh, ponytail person? That's nothing, that's a nothing nickname. Ponytail's friendship is murder? I'm real upset that that's where your brain went first.